oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Hey girls, welcome back to another vlog, girl. I hope, oh my gosh, I hope this lens is clean, but just to be on the safe side, let me wipe it off really quickly. All right, girls, I wanted to start the vlog at exactly 1.11 p.m. So guys, it is 1.11 and it's Monday and uh, I think today is the 27th. So we're probably gonna do a little bit of a spend the day with me. Um, you know, just running errands, just my typical day. That's the intention, you guys know that i intend on doing something and girl sometimes it just goes haywire but anyway guys this is my absolute favorite this is my favorite foundation guys this is the lancome tint idol um i wear the color technically because uh the winter time is here and my complexion is getting lighter technically i'm supposed to wear 425 with bisque warm but i just love being a shade like a one shade deeper on my foundation i think it just looks so pretty when you go one shade darker and then um maybe a shade or two lighter under your eyes i just think it looks so pretty but anyway the color i'm wearing is 435 bisque uh warm such a gorgeous 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 color and i'm gonna be honest girls i want to stop at the goodwill to see if I can find like some really cute jeans. So guys, all of my jeans are kind of a little too big for me. And uh, I'm gonna be honest y'all, the jeans that I like, they cost about $300 a pair. So I like Paige jeans, those are my favorite, but they are very expensive. So the last time I bought a pair, two pair of Paige jeans, about two brand new pair from the Goodwill for seven dollars uh, no for for eight dollars y'all know what i've been wanting to talk about this with you guys and you girlies that are new here guys i had uh weight loss surgery i try to kind of say this every couple of vlogs but anyway i had weight loss surgery um i lost a hundred pounds and then after i had weight loss surgery girls i went to dr and i got some work done now guys i have had a lot of work done cosmetic work done on my body um so before i lost weight i had a tummy tuck here in houston my company paid for it at the time guys i was working for verizon wireless now guys that was a very very long time ago so i got a tummy tuck because at the time i just didn't know you know i didn't know en enough about doing proper research knowing that a tummy tuck is only going to remove the fat in your lower gut it's not going to take away you know fat in other areas so i had i went to tijuana mexico guys i got the vsg weight loss surgery and then i waited oh my gosh guys i waited years later to start working and doing working on my body just to get it back um, I started doing cosmetic surgery. So the first time around, I went to um, I went to the DR and I had a doctor, Dr. El Monte. So when I went to her, I got a BBL and um, I got a BBL and I got a thigh lift. And I did love my results, but I wanted wanted my boobs done. So I went back to the DR and the next time I went back, my doctor name was Yulissa Infuente. So that's who did my body, the body that you guys see today. So she did my boobs, she did my booty, uh, well, she re did a revision on my booty and then um, she did more lipo. I told you guys, girl, they lipo from the ruta to the tuta. She just has a technique that'll make you look super extra curvy even if you are like a slimmer girl when i got back from the second uh surgery i had actually ended up putting on some weight um you know first of all when you get your boobs done i will at least speak to myself for myself when i got my boobs done girl um i ended up gaining four pounds in the dr and so then when i got home it was very hard for whatever reason to lose the four pounds. And then after that, I can't, I gained 
a little bit more weight because I ended up getting into, excuse me, a car accident. I think my highest weight was like 173. Um, but what I noticed y'all, when I started gaining weight, when I got up to 173 y'all, my booty was humongous. It looked like, it looked like a train was following me. That's my boot. It's like you would see me coming and then my booty would take like five minutes to come through. It was, it just stuck out like super, super far. And then I was like, damn, like why is my booty like growing like this? So y'all already know the nerd bombshell girl. I went down to the internet and I started doing research. Well, girls, I found out that if you have um, like problematic fat in your stomach which I, I do have problematic fat in my stomach um that fat when it's transferred to your booty is going to be problematic um but when that fat is being taken from your tummy and it's put into your booty uh that's the same fat and so you're gonna have the same problem so instead of your tummy growing out your booty is gonna grow out so my booty was like it was like it was huge and so uh i was like oh my gosh you know i knew that i needed to um you know just kind of get my body under control and so once i finished going through my um physical therapy for my for being in that car accident I got really serious about hiking, but at the time I started eating a lot, a lot of cucumbers. And then I started YouTube. So when I started YouTube, the weight started to come off or whatever. And plus I had already made up in my mind that I wanted, uh, you know, that I wanted to get my body together to start YouTube. So I just wanted to come and kind of give you guys a little bit of a history of my uh, surgery journey. And so now that I am more on the slender side, guys, I am now 137 pounds. I'm five foot three. Now being on the more slender side, my body, uh, it just looks like a very natural body. I don't think that you can tell, like you can look at me and tell that I've had a BBL or anything like that. Granted, I would like, you know, I would like, you know, a little bit more meat on me but that's okay you know we're just embracing our bodies for what it is but um i i did have a lot of work done um coming from having the vsg and so i thought that it would it was important that i say that because i don't know if the new bombshells knew that or not and uh i wanted to be very transparent and very honest about all of the work that I've had done pre weight loss surgery and post weight weight loss surgery. You need to get a little bit more intentional and more serious about working out. Guys, we have an amazing gym here in my apartment community and it's open 24 hours a day. I could go down there anytime I want, but uh, y'all know I need to get better at that. I'm just gonna close this conversation out by saying this. I know that I have a lot of girlies that have had weight loss surgery or will have weight loss surgery that follow my page or follow my YouTube channel. On your journey to uh, your weight loss goals, guys, save your money. So you can get uh, some of the things done that you may have to get done because once you lose that weight and you get to wherever you wanna be, things may not fall where they're supposed to fall. You know, you might need to get your boobs done. You might need to, you know, get a tummy tuck and get some things put back in place. And and don't be ashamed. It's nothing to be ashamed of, guys. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And then right now, what I would encourage that you girls do as you're on your weight loss journey, girls, start researching doctors. Start researching your um, the type of procedure that you want to have. You know what I'm saying? Like if you know right now you have a lot of, um, you know, belly fat and stuff, more than likely, depending on your age group, you might need, and your skin type, you might need a tummy tuck. So start doing the research now before you hit your 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 uh, surgery, I mean, or your uh, weight goal. And then that way um, you're ready to go to your next phase. But anyway, girls, I just wanna wish you girls good luck on your surgery journey and good luck with achieving your weight loss goals. But I'm gonna go for real this time. Let me finish up this makeup real quick and then uh, we're gonna go run our errands. 
All right, girls, this is the outfit. So guys, I have on these super cute jeans. I don't even know uh, when I bought these. I do know that these are probably from the thrift store. I have on my super cute Ash tennis shoes, a really cute crop sweater guys a turtleneck sweater guys i purchased this from ross and then i have on my really cute cream and uh with the silver hardware crop moto jacket and then we're wearing the really cute uh matching teddy blake bag so yeah this is the look for today We are just leaving Texas thrift, y'all. Let me tell y'all, girl. So, typically, I like to shop in neighborhoods that are going through a gentrification process. This neighborhood is not going through the gentrification process. Um, and so I was a little bit hesitant to shop over here because typically with neighborhoods that are already, you know, kind of popping a little bit, once they throw a thrift store in the middle of those types of neighborhoods, girl, the prices be ridiculous. But what I realized about this thrift store is that the girls who are doing the pricing of the clothes, they pricing what is fashionable to them for their personal fashion profile and fashion palette. So what I noticed is the girls, they think Fashion Nova is like, that's, that's like, high quality top tier top of the line to them so when you look at the fashion nova jeans they 21 dollars but when you look at the uh like the vintage levi's jeans and uh the other brand archive of archive of society and brands like that girl they six dollars uh, i was like baby we can definitely play this game sis so i um I purchased two pair, I think two pair of Levi's. Yeah, two pair of Levi's in Archive. I think they're Archive of Society, which is a Nordstrom's brand. Girl, three pair of jeans for $19. So we about to go, go down to the thing and wash the jeans. I really probably need to see if I can get a nail appointment. Y'all, you know what? I'm about to pull up on my nail shop. I know they gonna be looking at me not like, not say what not. Cause girl, y'all, I have not been to this nail shop in a long periodically time. We want my nails to look good. So that's what we're about to go do. And then we're gonna, uh, from there, we're going to head home. No, we need to go to Ross, Target, and Whole Foods to drop these jackets off and then we'll go home. So let's do that. But anyway, I just needed to come back and tell you guys, um, you know, the pricing and stuff on the jeans. But yeah, girl, let me see if I can uh, finagle my way into getting me an appointment and then I'ma call y'all back. So I just went and got my nails done. Uh, I went back to where I normally go and they did a beautiful job. I'ma show you guys in a minute, but oh. It's cold. Oh my gosh, guys. It's freezing out here. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. I think it's like, oh my god, I'm so cold. Oh. 
girl i think it's like 60 degrees hold on let me see is y'all it be getting cold in houston oh my gosh y'all it's 58 degrees girl i can't take it oh my goodness all right so one of you fabulous bombshells you guys are so smart uh left a really good comment and i didn't even think about this guys this is in regards to my really good guy friend who is i'm gonna just say he's heartbroken because the girl that he had been seeing off and on for a very long time she went on to get married and despite the fact that she went on to get married she is now unhappy in her marriage and so they've been in communication and she's expressed that she's not happy and he's not happy because he's frustrated because she went on to marry someone else but anyway what i didn't take into consideration is that maybe he's just a commitment folk so one of you fabulous bombshells wrote your friend wants someone he cannot have and he knows that um all he has to do is just talk to someone um he he doesn't have to put in the effort in doing anything else the woman may just be easy access because they have history together and he does not have to create history with anyone else she hit the nail on the head and that's something that i never took into consideration but listen i don't believe for one second not nah, not nah, not nah. as much as, as sad and hung up and caught up that he might be I absolutely believe that he's probably entertaining other women but maybe not in a, a very serious way because of the history that he has with this gal but anyway I thought that was a very interesting um, a very interesting and truthful take on um, on what happened so yeah I think the next destination is Ross I'm gonna be honest y'all I don't feel like he don't i just want to go home because it's cold but my booty is so <laughs> my booty is so freaking warm right now because uh-uh baby you better be quiet girl girl my car be beeping for no reason but anyway um i'm cold i'm ready to go home and uh, I forgot what we needed to stop at. Oh, we need to stop at Ross because I wasted that oil. The oil I've been using under my arms, girl. I think I told y'all that already. So that's really what we need to go to Ross for. But y'all know Ross is hit and miss. There are no guarantees. Um, and then we need to go to Target because I wanted to get some of those sausages from Target. But I'm ready to go home. Because it wasn't enough hold for... All right, girls, I was over here looking at some wig reviews. I'm looking at Chrissy Cousin. I have always loved her and her wig reviews. I've been following Chrissy for years since she was in college. I love her so much, such a pretty girl. Um, but anyway, girls, before I started looking at this review, I was looking up some homes. So the name of those, um, the way that you would describe those homes that I showed in the last vlog, um, or high-rise condominiums um so i did type up the zip code and i typed up open home open houses and so according to uh zillow they have approximately 300 open homes or 359 open listings in that particular zip code um i did find some the ones that i want to look at uh, the open home is on starts on Thursday so I do like the fact that on Zillow they have it set up where it just tells you immediately at the top you know when the open homes are so again it does uh, appear that for some of the ones that we want to look at they have an open home or open house I should say um, from uh, 10 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. on Thursday. And uh, some other homes that are actually really, really cute. And not only are they really, really cute, but the price point is really nice. Now, according to what I'm looking at, the price point is $335,000. Um, and then their open home, it starts at 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. uh tuesday which will be tomorrow so that's an option 
and um, I'm trying to see for the ones that we really really loved <laughs> the ones that we accidentally found in that neighborhood the open house starts on Saturday and it's from 1 until 5 p.m. and these homes uh, the price point is seven hundred sixty thousand dollars um now when i did the calculations let me see if i can find the calculator i was just kind of over here playing with some numbers and what i did i put in the um here we go so for me what i did i put in the best case scenario meaning the best credit the highest uh earning amount um of course everything else did apply like it was stuff like have you have ever had an eviction of course i said no uh are you in the military no um have you been late on payments within the last 12 months no so i put all of that in but the best case scenario i put in i think one option was your credit score i think i put in the highest which was like eight something and then like i said in terms of earning the highest paid was like two hundred thousand dollars a year plus so i put everything in as the best case scenario guys even with me putting in um the best case scenario and also putting in that i would be a first time home owner um and i would i selected the government fha 30-year fixed loan uh the lowest rate that they said is uh going today is 5.99 percent um, that's the rate and then the APR is 6.61% again guys this is with the best case scenario the best credit and one of the highest incomes um, even with that my payment um, would be I believe principal and insurance would be $2,305 a month um, so yeah and I, I you know hopefully I'm explaining this right because I really don't understand all of this stuff and then it gives you it says one one point and i guess the point it just says thirty six hundred dollars so what i'm assuming is that that thirty six hundred dollars um is maybe what you would get deducted off of the mortgage uh also guys it asked how much i would be putting down and so i just again did the best case scenario and i think i typed in the home i want to say i typed in the home rate being uh three hundred fifty thousand dollars i think and so i put down that i would my down payment would be seventy thousand dollars and so again even with the best case scenario you're looking at a mortgage over twenty three hundred dollars and so i'm like wow <laughs> you know that's not bad um you know especially in comparison to constantly renting but it's something to manifest you know so what I was thinking is that maybe we could go downstairs and I could print out maybe some pictures of these homes and but I'm just trying to think where I would put them in my home I need to probably just get an actual board and shit just put it on a vision board you know what else what could possibly happen I mean <laughs> just put it on a vision board so yeah I just wanted to tell you girls that um we're probably going to cook, but um, as you guys might be able to tell, my energy is a little bit low. So let me kind of get a little bit of energy and then we're going to try to make some sushi or some hood sushi girl. So anyway, um, let me kind of unwind a little bit and then I'll call y'all back. All right, guys, we're going to start with these uh, pork pot stickers. Guys, I purchased these at Trader Joe's. This is what we're going to use for the inside of the sushi. Guys, uh, disclaimer, this is trial and error. I have never done this before, so we just trying some stuff out. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is add some extra virgin olive oil um, to our griddle. Y'all know I like to cook everything on the griddle. So we're going to add that. Now I did let some of the uh, pot stickers thaw out earlier. So this is what we have. And then I don't know if you guys remember this, but y'all, this is our sushi baker. I purchased this from Amazon. So this is what we're going to be making to uh, using to kind of you know get the get the sushi molded 
So let me see. Oh, you know what? I think you do it. Like, yeah, there you go. So you just open it up. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and wash this out because it's just been kind of uh, sitting in the dishwasher. So let me wash this. Just don't get it till there's nothing at home We get together, oh, we get together But separate's always better when there's feelings involved What they say is nothing gets forever Then what makes love the exception? So why, 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 why are we so in denial? believe about ourselves shows up in our energy it's how we walk into a room it's how we communicate through body language I don't deserve to be here it's whether we sit up straight or hide out in the back of a meeting at times my own energy has been saying I'm cool with the bare minimum don't give me more 
Without knowing it, I stunted my growth because I was scared to be magnificent and doubtful that I was. I've embraced experiences I never dreamed I'd have, and I've risen to some enormous moments. But there's still more I can do, other ways for me to grow. And as I keep relearning, it's okay to own a desire for more. So guys, this is our second attempt at making sushi. We're gonna try this again one day. I don't know when, but we'll try it again. So anyway, instead of sushi, we kind of ended up with maybe like a, hold on, let me put it down like this. We ended up with, I guess this would be more or less considered a sushi bowl instead of a sushi roll. <laughs> So this is what we ended up with. I think where I might have failed, I probably should have purchased some uh, seaweed wraps. So I'll do that the next time. But anyway, let me at least like taste it and see uh, if it's good. And then I'll come back and let you guys know. All right, girls, my final thoughts on the homemade sushi fail. Baby, when I tell you that shit was good by me, Ooh! it was good right i know it don't look good i know the presentation was uh two thumbs down but in terms of the taste it was so freaking good mm, 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 mm. y'all yeah, see how heavy my eyes are this is a clear and sheer indication that it was so delicious a little bit spicy so the sauce was a little bit spicy um you know for my taste but for the girls who don't mind a little spice, it's good as far as the onion, uh, fried onions. Yeah. The, oh, crispy onions. I'm sorry. Perfect, perfect touch. The cucumber was so refreshing. And then you have the delicate sticky rice, which had such a clean, pure taste. And then when you add in the crunch from the dumpling along with the milk, bursting flavors it was a delicious and delectable meal so i'm going to encourage you girls uh, to try it at home however we're going to do it again but the next time i do it i'm going to purchase some um, seaweed wraps i think if we would have purchased the seaweed wraps we would have been in there okay but other than that guys it is so delicious uh, I'm strong. I'm going to strongly encourage you girls to make it at home um, for the kitties or make it for your boo, but just try to make the presentation a little bit better. But anyway, girls, um, I'm going to go take a shower. Um, I had to make sure these lashes were still on. But anyway, I'm going to go take a shower and then I'll give you guys a call back. When I